Hello, my beautiful light bright. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neil Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crane in the box. But before we get started, if you are new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. As you can tell, I am not in drag. I'm actually wearing my little fancy suit because I just came back the other day from the Miss Continental Queen of the North pageant. Having just gone there and being really inspired, I decided I wanted to make this video and let you guys know all about it. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what is the Queen of the North pageant, who are the judges, who are the contestants. Then we'll go through each of the categories of the pageant. Then we'll let you know the winner. And at the end, I will give you a few little recommendations, tips, things, things to look out for, prices and all of that jazz in case you wanted to attend. This is probably gonna be a little bit of a longer video, so I will leave some timestamps down below so you can jump straight to the sections that you are the most interested in. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So what is Queen of the North? Queen of the North is a preliminary pageant in Europe to get you to Miss Continental. Now, Miss Continental is the premier pageant in the world. It started in the 1980s and is still going on today and happens every year in Chicago, where a bunch of queens come together to compete for the title. Now, some famous winners that you might know that have been on Drag Race have been people like Roxy Andrews, Brooklyn Heights, Nasha Lopez, and Vanessa Van Cartier. Now, Vanessa Van Cartier is the first European winner to ever win this pageant. And that's because honestly, pageant systems like this don't really exist in Europe. So Vanessa Van Cartier teamed up with the Dutch dynasty to bring the pageant system to Europe and hence Queen of the North. The first time they did this was uh, last year. So this is the second edition where the winner of this pageant will get uh, flights, hotels, and entrance fees paid to the final one, but will also get coaching from Vanessa to help them win. Last year's winner of Queen of the North competition went on to place fourth at uh, Miss Continental. So this is pretty legit, you know what I mean? And for those of you who don't know, the Dutch Dynasty is one of sort of like the big drag shows in the Netherlands and I think maybe even in Europe because they give you like a really big stage and it is quite like high lux drag with big stages. Envy Peru performs there all the time. Janie Jatikay performs there. Vanessa Van Cartier performs there. And they do bring in the special guest performances every now and then as well. So the Dutch Dynasty teamed up with Vanessa Van Cartier to bring this pageant together and they were the ones hosting it again. So this event happened in Amsterdam on June 15th. Now the pageant does happen in Amsterdam and since it is the second one, it is still starting to get a little bit more and more known across Europe. So it is still not there yet. That being said, we do have queens from all over the country that do fly in to participate in this event. But the reason I mentioned that is because the audience that is in the audience is quite Dutch and is rooting for their local favorites. So if you're a queen coming from another country, you won't have as much love and support, but you can still do very, very well. Last year's winner was also from Belgium. So it really doesn't matter where you come from as long as you're coming to compete and you bring the goods. Speaking of which, let's get into these contestants and then let's talk about the jury. So let's get into these contestants. There are nine queens competing this year and they range all across Europe. Of course, as this is based in Amsterdam, you will get a few more Dutch queens. But like I said, I hope to get more international queens coming in the years to come. First up, we have Paula Hoffman. She is a 35 year old uh, drag queen from Italy um, who actually won Miss Elegant Italy in 2023. So she is coming off a uh, pageant competition win. So fun fact about her, when I was looking her up on Instagram, she actually goes by Paula Hoffman Van Cartier. So that makes me think that she has some connections to Vanessa Van Cartier. Um, as well as I noticed that she uses a lot of the same designers as Vanessa Van Cartier. So uh, there's probably some relation there. I also say that because if you know Vanessa, Vanessa speaks perfect Italian. She used to live in Italy. So uh, this is not a huge surprise. The second contestant is Miss Angel Wing. Miss Angel Wing is a 28 year old uh, drag queen originally from Curacao, currently living in the Netherlands. The next contestant is Miss Peaches and she is representing the UK and Scotland. Looking through her social media profiles, Miss Peaches is a trans contestant, uh, which we love by the way, and is also a podcast host. On top of it, she's got like 10,000 Instagram followers. So clearly she has a little bit of experience and knows what she's doing. The fourth contestant we have is Miss Janie Jacquet. Now Janie Jacquet 
is from the Netherlands, and you might remember her from a Drag Race Holland Season 1 or UK vs. The World Season 1. So she's coming in as probably the biggest name in the drag scene coming into this competition. This is her first time competing in a pageant like this. As she has said on a few occasions that actually pageants is something that she's always really wanted to do. Now, I know Janie through the scene, but I wouldn't say that we were friends. Actually, I don't even think she follows me on Instagram. So it was really interesting to see her perform in this sort of capacity because you're used to seeing her in stages and other realms and not necessarily in sort of like the pageant scene. Next up, representing Malaysia and the Netherlands, it's Paloma. Lust. Now Paloma Lust is the reason why I decided to go to this competition because we have worked together before and we have a lot of mutual friends in common. Uh, Paloma Lust is actually the former winner of Miss Travesty Holland which is a local drag competition she won back in 2022. And she's also the former winner of uh, Drag My Vision which is a competition that I did this year and lost uh, but you can watch that video somewhere on my YouTube channel if you want to go see my entry into that competition. So I was really excited to come support Paloma Lust as she enters this new realm and this new stage in her competition. Next up, representing Cameroon and the United Kingdom is Neong Bella. And Neong is a drag queen who said that she's only been doing drag for one year, which is shocking because if you see her, she is stunning. She said that she has actually in this last year been doing a lot of competition, so she is trying to level herself up with this one. But honestly, girl, been doing drag for one year and then entering Miss Continental is a very, very brave. Next up, we have Miss Laryngitis, and Miss Laryngitis is a trans drag queen coming to us from Ireland. Now, I don't know how long she was been doing drag, but going through uh, the competition, I was a little bit worried for her because even her promo picture was not a professional drag picture. And this is where you start seeing the different levels of drag. She, I don't know if she's just not been doing drag for that long or if in her part of the world, drag isn't that big. But just from her promo picture alone, you can tell right away that she was not coming in with the same uh, budgets because she didn't have a professional drag headshot done. But that seems quite basic to me, but hey, if you've seen my Instagram, you know what? I spent a lot of time and money on professional photo shoots. Our next contestant is My Little Pony. Now, if you watch Drag Race, you would recognize My Little Pony from season two of Drag Race Holland. Now, I also know uh, My Little Pony. My Little Pony was actually the first Drag Race girl to ever follow me on Instagram when I had like 200 followers followers and that meant the world to me. So My Little Pony always has a special place in my heart and I also just love her drag aesthetic. I always found it a little bit edgy, a little bit cool. To see her do a pageant which is completely glam was really interesting and when I saw that both Janie and My Little Pony were competing, I am so glad I did not sign up because obviously having been on franchises, having had a lot of experience, having toured the world, these queens have budgets, time, and they know their drag so they were definitely the front runners going into this next up it's a latex and latex is coming to us from scotland now latex is one of the other ones that when they showed the promo picture i was a little bit worried because it didn't look like a professional photos but then once clicking on her profile girl she's got lots of professional photos got a lot more followers than i do and is definitely a lot more polished i just don't know why they chose that picture for her promo picture because um she has definitely better on her page. Going through her profile, I didn't really get to know much about uh, Latex, except for that she's just a really good queen, but I love that uh, she's coming from Scotland and bringing some international talent to the competition. So that is it for the contestants. Uh, now let's get into the jury. The jury is made up of uh, six people, and the way that the jury works is that each jury member will award points to each contestant per round. And this is because each round is actually weighted in different amounts. For example, the talent show is worth more points than, for example, a runway. But we'll get into more of those details a little bit later. But for now, let's get into who is on this six panel jury. The first main judge is Vanessa Van Cartier. If the name sounds familiar, it's because she is the winner of Drag Race Holland season two, but she is a way more than that. She's actually part of the organizing committee and one of the reasons why this pageantry system has made it all the way to Europe. Not only that, she is a previous winner of Miss Continental, being the first European to ever win Miss Continental. On top of it, she is the first Continental to ever win Drag Race because there's only been two Continental 
potential winners to win Drag Race, which was Vanessa Van Cartier and Sasha Colby. But Sasha Colby only recently won and Van Vanessa Van Cartier won a long time ago. So uh, she is a very well suited uh, to be the main judge and the main competitor. Um, then we're going to get into this uh, jury panel. Next, we have Zane Dollings, which is the current reigning Miss Continental. She went and competed last year and won the entire competition in Chicago. And she's flown all the way to Amsterdam to judge these girls. Next up, we have Noel Anaya, who is a Mr. Continental 2024. So he is the current reigning Mr. Continental. Next, we have the current reigning Mr. Gay Europe, Tim Kalsters. Now, Tim not only is the current reigning 2024 uh, winner, but he's also won the 2023 version. So he's known to be doing pretty good in the competition settings. Next up, we're gonna get into some celebrity judges and we got the queen of makeup herself, Miss Nikki the Jaeger, AKA Nikki Tutorials. That is right, we got the YouTube queen, queen of makeup, on the scene to give her judgment. She was actually even a guest judge on a drag race. So she's been in the scene and she knows her shit. The next person on the judging panel is actually Miss Netherlands 2023, Ricky Collet. If you're asking what is Miss Netherlands? Well, you know, like Miss America? Well, it's Miss Netherlands. She won that competition and went on to compete in the world uh, titles, but she broke the internet because she is the first transgender person to break into the Miss World competitions, and all the conservatives went wild about this. And rounding up the judging panel, we have a singer, TV presenter, actress, Miss Carolina Downhausen. So now this is a very serious uh, pageant. It is not like your little bar gig. This is like next, next level. So they have some really strict uh, rules to go along with it. So even though this is the queen of the North competition, they are going to be following the Miss Continental rules to AT. How this works is that after each round, each judge will rate each contestant individually. Per round, a maximum number of points can be given. At the end of each round, the judges' sheets will be collected and added up and then divided by the number of judges to get an average score for that round. And that was the points that the contestant will get for that specific round. Since this will be happening round per round, the judges will have no idea who is currently leading because they will not see each other's points and will not know the average score either. This will then create a top five. Following the top five, there will be an additional round of competitions, which is questions and answers, that will then determine who is the final winner. Fun fact about this pageant is that I actually wanted to participate myself. I actually got the application form. I contacted a bunch of designers to figure out how much this is going to cost me to do. And then I realized it's a little bit more expensive than I thought. So then before jumping in and spending all this money, I said, you know what, let me go watch the show uh, and see what it's about, get some details before I participate. And girl, I am so glad I did. Having picked up the application myself, I also know that there is an interview portion, which I think is like for backstage stuff. So they probably have to prepare another outfit for that portion, which we will not talk about because that was not on the day of, but I just wanted to give you that little inside scoop. So next we're gonna go through each one of the categories and I will let you know uh, my highs, lows, and some different opinions of what some queens did well and what some queens did not so good. I don't wanna make this an extra long video, so I will not be going through every single detail of every queen, but just give you maybe an overall feeling of the category and who did what. So I am not an expert on the pageant system. This is in fact my first pageant that I've been to and seen in real life. That being said, having wanted to participate myself, I did do a little bit of a research on what to expect and have watched quite a few uh, videos. That being said, I am not an expert. Uh, I am just giving you my opinions on what happened and my thoughts. So please take this with a grain of salt. And of course, uh, different people might have interpreted things differently. I would recommend you go watch it yourself and give your own opinions. Uh, these are just my thoughts having been there live. I believe it is streaming on Out TV Europe uh, if you do want to watch the full uh, presentation. First is entrance, where the queens must wear a white outfit of their choosing. 
Second is swimsuit, which is self-explanatory, where the queens must wear a swimsuit. Third is the talent round. This is the highest points round. This is the round that's worth the most, where the queens can pretty much do whatever they want, but must showcase their talent as a queen. And the next round is evening gown, which the queens must show us their most elegant evening gown look. This will make up the top five. The top five will then come back to do a Q&A, uh, where they must answer one question live on the spot without rehearsing to kind of give them, you know, their pageantary answer, uh, which will determine the winner. That being said, uh, let's get into this. So the first round is the entrance round, where the queens must just walk on stage and present a white look. Now the queens could wear whatever white look that they want, but I did find it interesting that actually all of them came out in a dress. As this was the first round, this is the first time we actually got to see the queens on stage. And I will say this was a very strong start because all of the queens looked incredible. Of course, this is also when you started to see some queens having put more money behind this competition than others. As as predicted the front runners Janie Jacquet and My Little Pony were definitely coming out with some really beautiful expensive gowns. They definitely spent some money on these dresses having them blinged out to a T. I will say in a close a third uh, probably would have been uh, Paola from Italy who also came in with a fully studded outfit but just maybe not as big and voluptuous as uh, Janie Jacquet and My Little Pony. Then you had everybody in the middle and I'm not gonna break down each look I'm just gonna give you some sort of the highlights and I think that the person who was probably ranked the lowest in this category is Miss Laryngitis unfortunately comparative to everybody else hers was quite simple she does say that she's a seamstress and she makes her own dresses so I got to give her like kudos for that one I will say that some of these other dresses look more expensive than some people's wedding dresses it's really really hard to compete with that after they did their white runway they all lined up the host Miss Scarlett Vasai which by the way did an amazing job hosting went around and asked him a question. Now this one threw me off a little bit because this was not supposed to be a Q&A session. This, this was literally just supposed to be a runway. At the end of the competition, I actually went to go talk to one of the queens and ask them about this round because I didn't know there was a Q&A and they said they didn't know either. So I am going to predict that they were asking the questions more for the audience to get to know the queens and not necessarily that they were necessarily judged on these questions. And that would make sense based on the fact that they all got different questions and uh, some of them were a little bit more playful with it than they were in the Q&A round that came later in the competition. So I think that they were not necessarily judging them on the questions, but more judging them on the gown. Next up was swimsuit. And swimsuit started off really strong with Paula Hoffman coming out in this black and white striped bathing suit. She had this like little purse thing that she unopened and it turned into a hat, which was like a cute little gag. I find that with a uh, swimsuit, there's not much you can do. Uh, so the fact that she was able to do this made her go up a couple of points. She definitely gave you that full Barbie fantasy with the blonde hair and the black and white stripe. It was really, really strong. I would say that the other standout to me in this round was Paloma Lust. She decided to come out with her bare body with actually no padding whatsoever, which I think is a very, very daring. As drag queens, we put on a lot of layers to look naked and to make sure that we have all the curves, but Paloma laid it all out there and showcased her full body and she looked gorgeous. Now let's talk about the things that I didn't necessarily love. First, we had Miss Peaches. Miss Peaches came out with such a beautiful bathing suit and she's got so much personality and such a great walk the part that threw me off a little bit was her choice of shoe she went with like this pink boot thing which just really wasn't working for me because who wears a boot with a bathing suit first of all and second of all I found that it really cut her leg up I wish it was a little bit more elongated and that would have been a lot better with sort of like a sandal or a shoe to really give you that extension but I would say that that is a minor detail but that being said in a competition like this I think I think every detail matters. The next person that I think was struggling a little bit in this category was Neon Bella. Now again, she looked gorgeous and she picked a beautiful color. She chose this like light pink against her dark skin tone. Uh, the only problem I had with this bathing suit is that it looked quite basic. It didn't look like an expensive bathing suit and you are in a pageant after all. So I would have expected it to be a little bit more rhinestone, a little bit more detailed, a little something going on to 
make it a little bit more interesting. I think it would have looked great with sort of a flower pattern on it to pick up on her flower. But I think that the person that struggled probably the most in this category was Miss Laryngitis. Miss Laryngitis also decided to go with pink. The difference is that Laryngitis's uh, skin tone is much lighter, so the pink really blended in, especially from an audience point of view. I think she definitely needed a much more punchier color to stand out against her. And I don't know what Laryngitis was necessarily wearing, but you definitely saw all of this black. I don't know if this was supposed to be black detailing or if it was her undergarments showing, but because you weren't sure, it wasn't the best look for her. On top of it, as she turns around, you saw that her bathing suit was actually ripped, which is so unfortunate because um, you basically, in my opinion, lost that round with a ripped bathing suit because, again, this is supposed to be pageantry perfection. You can't do a ripped bathing suit. What I've learned from this is that if I'm going to do a pageant, bring us back a bathing suit. They don't cost that much. You always need one just in case something like this happens. And if that wasn't bad enough, she decided to wear this hat, which was a cute idea, but the hat was a totally different vibe from the swimsuit. And on top of it, she was struggling with this hat. She was moving it up, down. She was taking it off her head. It was a little bit too much. I think she should have just like not done the accessory and it would have been a lot stronger as it is. As for everybody else, they did perfectly well. It was great category overall. Just, you know, a few little nitpicks here and there. Next, we're gonna move on to the talent show, which I will be spending a little bit more time with just because this is like the main event and the one that you get the most points for. So I will be breaking down each one of these performances. First, we have Paula Hoffman. Paula decided to do a lip sync, which is kind of what most people ended up doing. And she decided to go with a ballad. Now, a ballad is not necessarily a bad choice. Having watched a few previous Continentals, a lot of people have done this, including Vanessa Van Cartier. So this is not a surprise. Um, it is an elegant pageant. So why not go in this direction? Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind because that will come back. She comes out looking gorgeous in this black gown and uh, midway through, she decides to do this reveal to this sort of like red, like fiery look, which looked beautiful as well. And when you do a reveal, I always say that the second reveal should look better than the first and she definitely followed that. Now, the only problem I had out of it is that I knew a reveal was coming and that's not a problem, but I was expecting like a different tempo when the reveal came. The reveal just didn't pay off the way I think she thought it did because it was just a reveal of a gown for the sake of a real reveal of a gown. I wish there was more happening. I was fully expecting it to be reveal and then like full dance number. I think that would have been a little bit cuter, uh, but she kind of stayed in this sort of mid-tempo thing. The lip sync was great, so no critiques at that. I just don't know that it matched up with some of the ones that are, are coming up. Next up, we have Angel Wing, and Angel Wing is also doing a lip sync, but she is doing it with a full choreography and dancers, which seems to be the theme amongst all the Dutch queens, which you will also be talking about in a minute. So Angel Wing definitely had the reveal. She had everything going on for her. During her performance, at one point, she removes her wig. And while I was in the audience, I was questioning, was this on purpose or not? Because she ends up going to a bald head. Now, I love a little bald head moment, very such a velour, uh, very strong. But the only problem was, I wasn't sure if it was on purpose or by accident. And the reason for this is that she ends up taking off her hat wig thing in the middle of a dance sequence. So she's not really making a moment out of it. It kind of just it comes off. I think she should have like really, you know, done something with it to make it show that it was on purpose. On top of it, I am a bald headed person. So if you do do a bald look, you definitely need to paint your whole head all the way to the back. And she didn't. You definitely saw the line where her makeup ended, which made it feel like it was an accident. So I think had she done that again, I would have painted the whole back of the head. So everything matched and it would have gotten a little bit of a cleaner look. The other thing about this performance is as she was uh, towards the end, she did slip a little bit and fall. Uh, she did work with it and turned it into a moment so that was a really good save from her but we can all tell she fell hey it happens despite all that all in all this act was pretty good next up is miss peaches and miss peaches comes out and decides for her talent show she was actually gonna live sing now, as drag queens, we mostly lip sync and we usually lip sync for a reason. So when they said live singing, I was a little bit questioning myself. She then comes out and does her first note and girl, it was beautiful. This queen knows how to sing. It was exceptional. I didn't hear any false notes or anything like that. She really showcased a unique talent and I think she got a lot of points in this round. On top of sounding beautifully, she looks beautiful. She comes out in this gorgeous stone gown from head to toe. It looked expensive with this little ostrich feather around the wrist. I was real perfection. If I had one tiny, 
tiny critique. I would have wished a little bit more uh, ostrich feathers around the wrist, but hey, that's me being like super picky. All in all, I think she got a lot of points in this round because this was amazing. Next up, it's Janie JK, and Janie JK is also doing a lip sync, but she is coming out with this like full Broadway number. She comes out dressed impeccably uh, with her whole choreographed uh, dancers and a chair. As she's dancing, she does this whole tambourine number. It looks like it's been plucked out of Nine the Musical and thrown onto this stage. Janie was doing it like she had done this number a hundred times before. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if she did. She was just hitting every beat on cue and it looked so effortless. Honestly, she either practiced this a lot or she does this as part of her regular gig because there is no way that you would have gotten that good with just a few practices. She spent some time on this and it was clearly well choreographed as well. She really raised the bar with this one and it was absolute perfection. I guarantee she got a lot of points for this number. Next up was Paloma Lust and Paloma Lust was also doing a lip sync and also brought a full choreography with dancers. I told you these Dutch queens uh, were not mixing. The difference is, is that Paloma Lust decided to go a little bit cultural and channel her Malaysian heritage and do this traditional dance. The other thing that we saw with Paloma Lust that we didn't necessarily see with the other queens was actually the background graphics. She was the first queen to start bringing in some of those visual elements behind the screen to the forefront. So originally I thought that maybe it was actually production that brought these visuals in the background, but considering this one had her whole name and everything going on, I think not. I think maybe the production company put background graphics for those who did not bring specialty graphics, but this was like clearly made for the number, which I think really brought up the number another level. I think it wasn't necessarily as clean as uh, Janie's, but definitely much more polished than Angel Wings. Next we had Neon Bella and Neon Bella was coming out with a lip sync as well but maybe more in like the sort of burlesque style. She starts off in this sort of like a cocoon thing dancing to this song sort of a butterfly and she opens up her wings to reveal this beautiful butterfly costume. It starts off with such a strong bang and it's looking like this is going to be a very good performance so you're kind of like expecting what comes next. But what comes next, unfortunate, is just a series of unfortunate mistakes. She goes to do her first little reveal, which is taking off her wings, and you can already see she's struggling. As she continues down the runway, she pulls off a one glove, and again, struggles a little bit through this one and is sort of going downhill from there. Um, she then continues to walk away and she then pulls off her like panties, which I thought was a little bit of a strange one because you would think that you would reveal the top first before revealing the bottom. You barely didn't even see this, like I didn't even know there was a bottom to this costume because it was all about the top. So then she turns around because she's clearly struggling with this costume and it just wasn't coming off and you know that that she wanted it to come off by a certain beat and she was probably already behind where she wanted to be. She eventually does get it off, but then she is bare chested, which I thought was an interesting choice. So it was really ruining the illusion for me. And normally I have no problem with this had this been on Drag Race or any drag competition, but this is Continental, which is more like female impersonation. So I think she should have kept a little bikini top on. She then goes and she probably had this whole choreography with these fan things, but they didn't open. So Again, she struggled through that part. Uh, I felt so sorry for her. You can see that she had really big ambitions and her starting was so strong. It just didn't land the way she did. Personally, I think she probably just needed to rehearse this number a couple of times with a full costume. She probably did some rehearsals, but probably without the costume uh, because maybe it was getting made or something like that. But I think a few dress rehearsals would have really helped her on this one. This is the part where she was a very beautiful queen and delivered a lot, but this is the round that was worth the most points. So unfortunately with so many mishaps in this round, she probably scored very low and uh, probably kicked her out of the competition by this point, which is really unfortunate. Uh, I will say that the fact that she was able to recover and keep her cool through all of this with only one year of drag experience, honestly, good on you, mama. I would love to see her come back next year and really like knock it out of the park because I think she can do it, to be honest. Next up, we had a laryngitis, and laryngitis also came out with a lip sync. Now, she didn't have the giant choreography of dancers like the Dutch queens did, but she did have one dancer, and to her credit, this was well rehearsed. 
you can see that she hit every beat and everything was sort of working at pace. Now, there was a couple of things that I didn't particularly enjoy about this lip sync, mainly was that I was waiting for it to go somewhere. Although the, the, it was very well choreographed and she was hitting every beat the way she wanted to, I was just missing that extra pop. Like I was waiting for that moment to happen and that moment never happened. It really was like a little thing here, a little thing there, a little thing there, and it was cute, but it wasn't that extra like uh, some of the other queens did. The other thing that really hurt her, I think was her styling, her hair and her dresses just weren't that expensive looking. And when you had people spending like literally thousands of dollars on a gown, it really showed in comparison. I think had she done different hair and different dress with this exact number, it would have really went a long way to elevating this number. And because of the sort of not great styling and the number that didn't really do much. This kind of felt like very middle of the road. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't the best. But unfortunately, after her mishap with the bathing suit, she really needed this to be like perfection and the number one talent in order to get her out of that negative position. But I think she felt kind of middle of the road, uh, which probably didn't help her scoring. Next for the talent show was uh, My Little Pony, and My Little Pony also did a lip sync, but My Little Pony did a lip sync like nobody did a lip sync. She comes out in this sort of like a dark theatrical thing. It goes a little as an Emmy with some whips, and then she goes into a full dance break and then ends up in a sort of like a ballad style song. This is the type of drag that I love. This is what I want to see. This is what I would want to do if I was on the show, if I could do that. It was pure perfection. I was just like jaw dropped, loving every single minute of it. You can see this was like a full production with like really beautiful costumes and really intricate details. Again, I don't know if she created it for the show or if she does this on the regular, but it was done impeccably. She was really showing the audience why she was one of the favorites going into this competition, why she was on Drag Race and why she probably should be on All Stars soon. Honestly, girl, this was everything. To me, this was just simply amazing and I guarantee she got lots of points in this category. So next we had a latex and latex was also doing a lip sync number. Even before latex comes onto the stage, her like video graphics come on. And I thought these were really beautiful because she not only used the back of the stage, but also the front of the stage because it wrapped all around. I don't know how she did that, but it was like really, really slick. The only thing that I had a problem was, was that uh, the graphics were of like a jail cell with women in them. So I thought she was gonna be coming to do like a cell block tango, or I thought that this was maybe supposed to be some sort of like red light district Amsterdam, but then she comes out dressed as like a giant flower in like a more of like a Moschino inspired flower outfit doing la vie en rose. So I was just kind of like, what do these two things have to do with each other? I thought that was like a little bit of a miss the graphics and the performance together. It didn't quite make sense for me, but they were both good individually, you know what I mean? And she starts doing her, her lip sync. It was a very beautiful lip sync, really no complaints. And everybody kind of predicted that this was gonna be a reveal, which is totally fine. And it was, uh, she does reveal. The only problem I have with this number was that again, it was very simple, very middle of the road. It kind of reminded me a lot of what Paula Hoffman did. They both did sort of slower songs with a costume reveal, but it never really changed tempo. It never really went anywhere. It was kind of just like a beautiful ballad. Costumes were good, graphics were good, lip sync was good. Nothing wrong with this at all, but nothing special about it either. In a competition, you, you want to stand out. And so I think she could have definitely uh, used some dancers, some crazy graphics, a change of pace or something to just like bring it up a notch. But overall, simply good. Next, we get into evening gowns and oh my God, this category, every single person really turned it up. And this is where you saw all the money being spent. We start off with Paula Hoffman and Paula Hoffman comes out in this gorgeous gown with these beautiful hip pads. Spoiler alert, this was my favorite gown. And that's a little bit controversial considering some of the other ones that are coming up. Uh, but she looked spectacular in this. Next was Angel Wing and Angel Wing decided to come out in this sort of a bright pink. And I think this was a really good choice because it really 
stood out from everybody else. It had the feathers, it had the jewels, it had everything that you wanted from this gown. Um, so super strong for her as well. Next, we had Miss Peaches, which Miss Peaches was coming out in this like a really beautiful slight peach pale color. I think from the audience, you didn't necessarily realize that it was peach. It just looked kind of like off white, but I saw it like afterwards in the video and I was like, oh yeah, actually it was peach and it was quite beautiful. I think that the issue that Miss Peach has had with this outfit is that she was coming off of the other two who really went rhinestone bedazzled to the gods. So this one in comparison looks simple and girl, this wasn't a simple outfit. It just didn't like shine or bling as much. Uh, you can see that the detailing on this dress with maybe a little bit more pearl and a little bit more subtle. I honestly think she would have been better off going with her performance attire as opposed to this one because her performance attire was gorgeous and was blinged out. If she is watching this, I'd probably say maybe switch those two because I actually liked her performance attire better. However, I don't know what the rules are for evening gown. I don't know if there has to touch the floor or what the whole story is. So maybe she couldn't. That being said, her current dress is very gorgeous. It was just unfortunate she had to follow the first two queens. Next up was Jane Jacquet and Jane Jake came out in the full theater moment. She comes out with this coverall and she then takes it off to reveal to this dress with this long train and girl that she really milk her moment. Everybody was gagged. You can really see the audience like clap when this one was coming on because she was really trying to elevate it. Personally, I felt that it was a little bit much and I did prefer Paula's, but not to say that this was bad by any means. It was next next level. After that we had Paloma Loss and Paloma Loss definitely went a lot more simple. She went with more of like this, a slick dress that's just hugging her body. This was a little bit too simple for me. I think she could have added a little bit extra to it. I think had she done this exact dress but just added a bottom like mermaid style with like a lot and lots of white feathers. I think that would have just taken it up a notch again but that is because I'm comparing them one to each other and each one is just getting better and better. Next we had Neon Bella and Neon Bella came out with this like a silvery outfit with the bustles. Uh, I'm not a big bustle uh, person myself but everybody at my table was loving this. Um, she definitely put some effort and some time into it and honestly her face looks uh, gorgeous. The only problem was that after her performance number there was only so much she could do to really get up there and I guess this helped but probably not enough. Next up was laryngitis and laryngitis decided to come out in this like red color. I think red was a very bold choice. I think this really stood out. So I think that that was a good idea. The problem is, is I don't know if laryngitis knew what she was getting herself into with this pageant because it just wasn't at the same level as everybody else. This is supposed to be your biggest, best drag and you're competing with people that were on Drag Race. So it really has to go to that level or above. And this was not even at a Drag Race level, honestly. It needed a whole bunch more jewels and a whole bunch more detailing. Then she decided to pair it with this like fur shawl, which I think the idea of a fur shawl thing was a really great idea. Idea, but it just felt uh, flimsy. Um, I felt like this really needed to be made out of ostrich feathers to, you know, bring up the level of the dress. She also decided to pair this with a tall hair. Again, really cool idea of tall hair. I think this was her best wig of the night. I don't know that this was necessarily the pageant for a hair like this uh, because a lot of people were going much prettier and this definitely felt a little bit edgier, which, you know, I like. But I think what really sort of went downhill with this hair is not necessarily the style because the style could be debatable is the fact that when she walked backwards, you can see her uh, her normal hair underneath. It just wasn't glued down properly at the back. So that probably lost her a few more points. So uh, any chance that she did have of potentially making it into the top five was probably lost by this point. Next was My Little Pony, and My Little Pony, just like Janie JK, came out with this coverall and then took it off. And then she had this fully rhinestone gown with this big bustle. She then walks and takes her sweet time and releases the bustle to reveal to this beautiful gown. She really milked every moment of this performance and she looked stunning. You know how I was saying I thought Janie's was a little bit too much? This was definitely too much, but I loved every minute of it. So I'm not even gonna criticize it because it was just gorgeous. She really set the standard of 
how this needs to be done. And finally, we had a latex, and latex was coming out with this a black and white number. She was definitely giving you a little bit of that Cruella de Vil vibes, which I was loving because I felt like she was trying to bring a little edge to this category and really bring a little bit more of her personality into it, which is something I probably would do had I been in, in this competition. Now, I do think that this hair, although very beautiful and very well crafted and sculpted, probably spent some good money on it, to be honest. I think it was a little bit small. I wish it was a little bit taller just to give her more height, but that's just my personal opinion when it comes to hair. But I think what really was the downfall to this outfit was the fact that she could not walk in it. Aww. She was taking little steps. She had to help herself up. It was really such a downfall because she was doing kind of okay in the competition. I think that she could have snuck her way into the top five. But then with this mishap with the dress and her struggling through it and barely being able to walk, it really did not help her at all. And it was a little painful to watch. And I felt sorry for her because you can see that she was trying so hard to keep calm on her face, to keep elegant, uh, and really doing what she needed to do. It's just really hard in a situation like that. So she just kept working and working her way through it. I'm wondering why she didn't practice walking in this dress a few times so that she can understand and maybe even taking some of it out because it was just way too tight for her. I think this would have been fine on something like Drag Race because they're not really judging the walk. They're just judging the dress. And here they're kind of judging everything. So the fact that she couldn't walk was a little bit of a disappointment. Personally, I would have just got it tailored to have the front open and then it would have been just like immaculate, honestly. And that was it for the evening gown. And despite me giving my little critiques here and there, honestly, I would say all of them looked outstanding and better than any drag I have in my closet. So watching this show just really told me like, I really need to step up my it's at this point in the competition that the final five are finally revealed and the final five are the ones that are going to go into the Q&A session. And the final five end up being Paula Hoffman, Miss Peaches, Janie Jacquet, Paloma Lost, and My Little Pony. And honestly, this was the exact same top five I had as well. These were the top five that were consistent across all categories that looked stunning every single time and didn't make any mistakes throughout the competition. If I break down the other ones and the reasons why I think they didn't necessarily make it, we had laryngitis just who wasn't ready for this competition. I think she definitely needs another year or two and then needs to come back. Her drag just wasn't at the same level as everybody else. We had latex that had that unfortunate mishap with her dress that she could not walk in it. So that was a little bit like, mm. then we had Neon Bella, which really screwed up her all of her reveals and her talent show, just a little bit of a mess, to be honest. And we had Angel Wing who did trip in her talent show number and fall. So all the other contestants made mistakes here and there. So this to me was a little bit more of an obvious top five. For the top five, they now have to answer a question. And in order for them not to sort of cheat, all the contestants are uh, put backstage where they cannot hear what the question is because they are all gonna get the same question. Now, this sounded a little bit weird to us when we were in the audience. We're like, if you're sitting backstage, surely you're gonna hear the question. So that seems unfair. I did talk to one of the contestants after the pageant. They did tell me that yes, they did put them in a room where they couldn't hear the question. They were blasting music. So really nobody could hear anything. So they all did go into that a little bit blind. The question that they ended up asking was, Basically, in a nutshell, what is the most precious thing to you? When it came to the question and answers, for me, everybody did kind of good. It's hard to just like react on the spot, especially when you have that much pressure and especially when you're in the top five. I think the person who struggled probably the most would have been Paula Hoffman. She was also the one who's probably, whose English was probably not the best. So I felt like she was missing a lot of the emotion into it and a lot of that personality. I wasn't getting that like drive from her, which was kind of like a, a miss. I think that the superstar uh, on the question and answer would have probably been Paloma Lost. Paloma came out with a strong hit, a hitter answer, which was talking about her culture, talking about the way she brought up. Everybody else kind of answered a very basic way, a very pageanty way. None of them were bad, but none of them made me feel anything except for Paloma's, you know what I mean? And then it is time to announce the winners and they decided to do it a second runner up, first runner up, 
and winner. Us that were in the audience and the table that was around us, we were basically arguing who was gonna win. Was it gonna be uh, Janie JK or My Little Pony? Because it was quite obvious that they were the top two uh, simply because every single one of their gowns was strongest. Their talent show was really strong. And in terms of answering that final question, they were about the same in my opinion. And it turns out that third place ends up going to Paloma Lust, which was not a surprise because she was Pretty good all in all, and I think she edged out everybody else with that last question, in my opinion. Then in second place came My Little Pony, and in first place came Janie Jacquet. So I just wanna say a big congratulations to Janie Jacquet. You can see it in her eyes and how much she lit up when she was getting crowned. But we find out that they end up giving consolation prizes to second and third place. So what are the prizes you hear? So if you came in third place, you will get a round trip ticket to Chicago, which I think is really cool because the competition is in Chicago. So if they want, they can sign up and go to the competition. If you came in second place, you will get a round trip flight to Chicago and a hotel paid while in Chicago. Again, really great. And if you came in first place, you won a round trip ticket to Chicago, a hotel to Chicago, and your entrance fees to Miss Continental paid in Chicago. Of course, you won a crown and a sash. You are also getting a private coaching from Vanessa Van Cartier so you can do better in the Miss Continental competition. You are also getting a guest spot at the Dutch Dynasty, which honestly, Janie doesn't need because she is one of the queens that already performs in it, and 1,200 euros in cash. Really big prizes. I think the biggest prize in at least the, the Dutch uh, Belgian scene that I know of. So they are really stepping it up a notch. So that's the full breakdown of the show. It uh, was a uh, quite an experience. So uh, let's get into my feelings about the show, what I think, what I would recommend. So first up, I will say that when I bought the tickets, I thought that they were quite expensive. You are looking at buying an 80 euro ticket just to go see this pageant. Plus that doesn't include drinks or food. So you're not leaving that club without spending spending easily a hundred plus euros a person. Having been there and having watched it, I fully see where all the money is going. There's great prizes. The location was beautiful. The drag queens spent so much money. The show lasted like three hours. So it's not like your little rinky dink show. It really is giving you like a lot of uh, production value into it. I will say that I think that the ticket prices did scare a lot of people because the show was not sold out, which was surprising. I would have probably dropped it like 10 to 20 euros a person just to fill it up. But you know, you're the business people, you know what you're doing and not me. In terms of the stage and the venue, the venue was much smaller than I anticipated. When I saw the first floor plan, I was like, ooh, this is a big venue. I want a, a big seat. I want a seat right next to the stage. And it turned out to be really quite small. And in fact, what even scared me the most was the center runway where the queens were walking, which was teeny tiny narrow. Honestly, if I was walking down that, I'd probably trip because you literally just fit. Kudos to those girls for walking down that plank. If I was to buy a ticket again, I would definitely not go straight onto the stage or right next to the runway, which is the ticket I originally wanted. I ended up going a little bit further off on the booth side, and I actually think that that was a better option, just because you were a little bit further from the stage and you could see them fully walking up and did down. So I think that that was a great seat choice for me. I don't necessarily know that I would have necessarily originally purchased this ticket had I not wanted to participate next year, and had I not wanted to make this video for y'all, I probably would have thought twice about it. Since that was sort of the plan, I said, you know what, let's give it a go. Um, and I'm glad I did, to be honest, because it was a really fantastic show. I think it's also really cool if you want to meet other people. I ended up meeting Lightning Aurora from a Drag Race Italy, who was in the audience, meeting Nikki Tutorials after the show, and got a cute little picture with her. Also, if you're in the scene like I am, you're probably going to know other producers and fashion designers are there that all do stuff. Uh, around drag. So for me, it was also like a little bit of a networking event. Uh, got to chit chat to some people. And then I also got the little walk, the little red carpet and get my picture taken with my little cute suit. Now, the other thing is, is that uh, the Dutch Dynasty does do other shows. And if the, this is any indication of the level of shows that they produce, I'm very curious to see some of their other shows. So if anybody at the Dutch Dynasty is watching this video, please send me a ticket because I'd love to do a full review of the show uh, for YouTube. All in all, I had a fantastic night and would recommend. I think that's a full review of the show. I tried to give you as much detail as possible, 
give you all of my opinions, but if you did have any questions or any additional thoughts, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to reply to them. Again, I don't work for the show. I'm just doing this as a viewer, as a fan, as a drag queen. So I'll do my best to give you as much as possible. Once again, my name is Neil Noir, at Miss Neil Noir on all social platforms, and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.